What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be doing a short scene breakdown and visual effects walkthrough for another one of the visual effects composites that we've used for our Spiderfy add-on for Blender trailer. I'll be showing how we made this shot of this woman taking a photo of the seagulls outside the window, showing the general scene setup inside of Blender, and then the various compositing techniques that we've used inside of After Effects. Anyways guys, here we are inside of Blender. This is our general scene setup here. As you can see on our right panel here, as usual, we have our camera view. This is just a nice way to work so that you can see your general 3D setup on your left side and then you can see what your camera is looking at on your right panel here. And the scene setup is super simple. We've used the Spiderfy Seagull preset here and imported that custom void system into our scene. And uh, then we've just placed our seagull emitter off to the right of camera and we've scaled it up a little bit. And then we've taken the goal that our seagulls will follow throughout the scene and uh, we've kind of animated it in front of the camera here. So as you can see on the bottom here, you can see all the animation keyframes that we've added to our goal for our seagulls. And we've just used the auto key function so that we can just kind of play the scene here and then move this goal around and you can kind of move it as you see the seagull following it to get the pattern that you want so as you can see here I'll just go ahead and play through it we just have our goal kind of moving around and our seagulls just following it as they should and I made a video on this previously on using this technique to animate void systems but uh, pretty much you just turn on the auto key function and uh, drag your goal around as you play through your scene and then you can kind of watch and see what the void particles are doing and for this specific shot we've literally used just this one void particle system that we've imported from Spiderfy and uh, that is literally it we've just gone ahead and rendered it out in a very clean way I did add an HDRI in our world settings of a similar background to our live action shot. If I go to preview in our world settings, you can see that the general brightness is the same and you can't really see it here, but the HDR also includes some really nice sky detail that is similar to our live action shot. As you can see here, our seagulls are lit pretty evenly as they should be because we're trying to match our background and we render them out with an alpha channel in an opening XR file format. So we have a very clean and perfect element that we can use inside of After Effects for our compositing process. Even though there was a little bit of movement in our live action shot here, I didn't feel the need to track it as the camera was pretty much in the same position and the birds were pretty far off in the background. So I just did a basic point track inside of After Effects for our element here. But uh, anyways guys, that was it inside of Blender. In Inside of After Effects, the process was fairly simple as well. This is our final composite here, and I'll just go through each layer one by one. The first thing I did, as I mentioned, is actually track our live action shot here. So as you can see, we have four different trackers here, but they're all going to their own null object. Um, and they're just for different portions of our footage. And then we've made null one our main tracking point that is connected to null two. And then consecutively, we've made null two track to null three and null three to null four. And the reason for this is because the point we are trying to track was at times behind our uh, character here in the foreground. So we actually needed to use four track points and uh, apply that data separately to each null object and then connect that data all onto one null object. I hope that makes sense the best way to do this is obviously just to find one point or something to track in your scene and then track that data to an old object and uh, use that as your main tracking point but uh, this is just a little way you can troubleshoot that but uh, anyways this shot is super simple once we tracked it we just added our seagulls to the scene I have a few different effects on here but this is our element added without any effects added to it as you can see it looks pretty bad right now it's not integrated into the environment at all so the first thing I did to blend this into our scene was add a camera lens blur effect here with a blur radius of four. So I'll go ahead and enable that. And now as you can see, already looking much better, much closer to our blurred clouds and city in the background. Then I've added a tint effect, tinting our seagulls element toward the color of the sky in our background as well. So I'll go ahead and enable that. 
which uh, as you can see gives it a little bit more environmental lighting and also lifts those shadows a little bit um, i did think the shadows were lifted a little bit too much so i added a curve setting here to bring them back down and uh, kind of match the black levels to our background city here so uh, that was it for our seagull layer another thing i did was create a mask here and just rotoscope out this foreground here as you can see this is a reflection of our character in the window and this uh, sky that you see is not actually the sky directly behind this glass but rather a reflection so i've just masked out our seagulls so that they only show up in this portion of the image the next thing i did to to integrate the seagulls into the environment was create a mat of the window here in the foreground of the shot as you can see right now we have some seagulls overlapping this um, window in the foreground which we obviously don't want as they're supposed to be off in the distance so what we've done here is we've just added a mat to hide the window as well as the uh, woman here in the foreground and we've just used an extract effect to extract the brightest parts of the image so pretty much just the sky layer which in this scene happens to be the sky and uh, we can isolate that sky very effectively with this extract tool and uh, create a mat with it very easily so as you can see if I just isolate it by itself this is our mat and this black part here where there is an alpha channel is exactly where we want the birds to show up um, and I've just um, added a little camera lens blur to this mat as well I tested out some refining tools on the mat but it turns out all I really needed was a little camera lens blur and it was enough to sell the effect finally to finish off the shot as usual I've added an adjustment layer with some color correction I've used the Lubitry color yet again and when we enable it this is what we get for our final shot Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Lots more tutorials and breakdowns coming soon. I'll see you next time.